Hi guys, welcome back to Hadal TV. Tonight we have a special guest, Ahmed, and also we've got another Ahmed over here. It's Ahmed Square today, man. I don't know what I'm doing in the middle at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, sir? You okay? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. I said uh, thanks for the invitation on Hadal TV. I know I was meant to do last season, so I do apologize, but hopefully start off with a bang for season two. With the boys tell the truth man you've been dodging us <laughs> no yeah. apparently he's been busy um he said he wasn't here to take part he was taking over something <laughs> i butchered that but don't worry you'll see that later i think no this... i think definitely as you said i have a takeover is complete so uh definitely have time uh, on my hand now to nice. do interviews so yeah definitely uh, looking forward to this just tell us a little bit about yourself like who's ahmed yasin where does ahmed yasin come from like yeah, so in terms of myself, uh, I'm a local lad, uh, but uh, not born and raised in England, but came here from a young age, five years of age, uh, lived in Side for nearly 30 years, three wow. decades. Uh, I've got eight younger, seven younger siblings, five sisters, two younger brothers, very well known within the community uh, in terms of Myself, um, I'm a local lad that just likes to do local things, supposedly. Yeah. So football being one of them, uh, mm. being a local lad, I've been able to have the luxury and privilege of, you know, playing for the youth teams. So I'm yeah. on the youth teams, uh, had the privilege of even captaining some of the youth teams. So it kind of perfectly led to me to transition into, you know, coaching, mentoring, uh, wanting to give back to the community uh, through sports. Nice. So you touched on community there quite a bit. What is it that you do within the community? Like for those, I mean, when I see, when I think of, when I hear Ahmed Yassin, I, I see a lot going on in the background. Uh, like what do you actually do in the background apart from being on the pitch, giving you know, it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, there's, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, I think everyone always sees um, the final product in terms of uh, what's happening on a football field. But in terms of what actually goes goes on, getting the boys, getting the teams to that stage and to that point. There's a lot uh, in, in the sense of community engagement, in terms of community work. Uh, we have a local organisation that I'm a director of nice. um, called Claremont Youth Project. Um, we've got local individual um, people that have got lived experience, that are directors, um, administrators, uh, creative directors like yourself, uh, you sit on the board yourself, Ahmed. Who, yeah. you know, there's a saying what we have is uh, work hard in silence and let success be the noise. So, we're not one to take credit for what we do, but we like to make the work. Um, no, definitely, man. I'm, I'm like you when it comes to that. I just like to be in the background, behind the scenes, let things happen, and um, you know, provide and help whatever we can. Now, what is it that you know? Obviously. It's a bit weird me asking, but for example, like for someone like Asad who doesn't really know the ins and outs of Claremont Youth, like what is Claremont Youth? What what do you do? What do we do? So originally, the way Claremont Youth started, it's probably not your most conventional way to start an organisation. Uh, it kind of consisted of a, like a 10-year early prevention programme uh, where we we help to develop three age groups three, uh, eight nine and eleven years of age uh, helping them with their footballing skills social uh, actions that they needed in terms of family issues um i look at mashallah i call it manchester's best kept secret uh, <laughs> not everyone's aware of the, the journey uh, that these boys these young boys local boys uh, achieved which was from 2010 to 2020 i think for nine years in a in a Nine years in a row, they won cup finals, got to finals. Mashallah, some of them went on to good academies, the likes of Man United, Man City, Burnley, Blackburn, Huddersfield. And we were going to do like a documentary at the end of 2020. Unfortunately, as you all will be aware of 2020, uh, we had the unprecedented times with the pandemic. So we've kind of put it on the shelf. We are still looking to do the documentary. We've got all the content over the years. Is that going to come off the shelf anytime soon? I believe it's probably, it's all about timing, they say. So yeah. I feel like probably now more than ever, yeah. it's a good time to share that story and kind of give a voice to the voiceless. Because for me, uh, I've always known there's great talent in our communities. You know, I've, yeah, 
especially all three of us there, <laughs> we had the luxury of playing for the local Somali team, one of the first teams to do well in uh, international or uh, regional competitions. So, mashallah, we, we had the luxury and privilege of playing um, and now it's passing that knowledge on to the next generation and making sure that the talent is getting the opportunity to showcase their abilities. And, and I think that's what the platforms like Claremont Youth yeah. um, and the local grassroots initiatives that we do in terms of football teams. Yeah, That's why it helps with, you know, uh, keeps these boys busy. No, definitely, keeps these man. single mums uh, happy as well because at least they know their sons are being proactive. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Out of trouble way as well. Definitely. Which is absolutely important. And I think in today's society, especially, um, there's a lot of, especially the backbone and... The backbone of our community has been single mothers raising young men. Um, so the little bit that us as the new generation of young men, what we can do to be role models or mentors, it's the least what we can do, especially being Muslim as well. You know, uh, we want to help the, the less fortunate. So that, that's the charity bit, you know. Now nah, I love that, man. Amazing. In the community. Um, so instead of community, who do you work with? Like, is it like... So in terms of uh, Claremont Youth, uh, we we created the organisation in terms of registering the organisation back in 2018, uh, officially registered 2020. Wow, it's been running quite well. Yeah, yeah, it's been running uh, for a few years. Um, I think the timing of when we needed to come to the table was at the start of the pandemic. But prior to that, we already been working on initiatives and uh, preventive prevent actions to help the community and um, I think when we started we started collaborating with the local organization institutions and um, the city councils you know the mayor office um, other local, uh, local councillors we have the big established organizations that are in the heart of the community so we created partnerships through youth and play program VIU which is a pilot um, I think there were some amazing projects that we were part of, but also the half the holiday activity that we do with uh, every summer, winter, Easter. Um, we do holiday camp where we provide sport activities um, added with uh, healthy eating, with classroom mm -hmm. activities and workshops. So they learn about black history, gangs, violence. So it's kind of like a second dosage of education. Yeah. But at the same time, um, supporting and helping those families in in the holidays where yeah. uh, you know only the only time that they might get food as Marcus Rashford uh, was great enough to that was you know, incredible campaign for yeah. and it was it's amazing it's it's sad to see that it takes a fo a young footballer uh, rather than the local government yeah. to, to, to be help something. support so Marshall, this is why I get into sports and this is the power of sports as well that. Mm. A young man, a young local lad, uh, can have an impact like that for so many cities across mm. the country, and I think we benefited from it. Other than mashallah, every summer camp we get close to about one hundred and forty kids. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, they're, they're different background, different demographics, um, from boys to girls, coming from Somalian, Arab, Asian backgrounds, English. So it, it gives us a good diverse. Uh, background of, of kids that we help and support we have great facilities we, we the venue we operate out of is plot lane complex which is if anyone knows it's the old man city youth academy ground yeah so you've had the likes of you know david beckham gary never the class of 92 playing on yeah. there so I think it's it's nice that when we were young, we used to walk past these facilities. We weren't allowed to go to the fields, man. We, we, weren't, we weren't allowed, but, <laughs> and it's so beautiful to see our young sisters, our young brothers, little kids that are, have that opportunity to be in these spaces and give them a, a helping hand in their development and their progress in life. So oh, that's, Google, a, it's amazing, man. that's what we do in, in the sense of Claremont Youth Project, um, where a local, a local organisation that has local understanding, local individuals that can have a bigger impact, hopefully, and hit the, the, the issues that are at the core uh, and hit them right at the core. Is there any sort of, like, future collaborations, any, any organisations you're planning on working with? Yeah, so one of our key partner organisations is 
uh, Families Against Violence. Oh yeah, um, Fab, yeah. Yeah, Fab. Uh, there's a gentleman called James Gregory, um, Caribbean background, local guy himself. He was raised in Russia. Uh, he was there when there was the Maasai riots 40 years ago. So he, he's someone who's got a good experience of the area and the community. But in terms of how he became part of Fav Families Against Violence, it started off with Fathers Against Violence. And this came off the back of uh, losing his son uh, to violence. Um, wow. Sadly, um, his son was going out to a party. They parked, uh, they parked up at a pub. Uh, there was a shooter who came to shoot someone inside this pub. A uh, stray bullet came through the back of the window where his son was in and hit him in the back of the head. Oh, wow. And it's sad, uh, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got two sons myself and, you know, uh, the, the thought of losing my child or losing a son it's is terrifying, it's, it's terrifying, you know. But this gentleman, mashallah, you know, it's amazing what he's gone on to do is he may have lost a son, but he gained so many other sons through mm. the activity and the charity work he's been doing. And I always love underdogs. I'm all about underdog stories. So as soon as I seen his story and how the established organisations weren't supporting him or Mm. weren't getting him to the heights that he should be at, Mm. I think one of the beautiful things about Claremont Youth is we've gone and set about our task, which is to elevate FAV. The moment Families Against Violence elevates as an internal partner, we will elevate. So our strategy... I know what my colleagues looked at me at the time. What do you mean uh, we, we're going to just partner up with Fav and not go chase the money? But I think sometimes in life, uh, we, you can go chase after finances. Um, but it's also good to not forget your goals and objectives and yeah, what yeah. you're trying to do. Trying to you know, and it's all about, for us, it's a collaborative work. And there's no one better than someone who's got a lived experience of the area, who's lost a child, who can understand and relate to many kids. And I always put a category of our community in three categories, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, unfortunately, alhamdulillah, we've got, you know, local mosque initiatives were there that will always t- cater and target the good kids. Mm. But what happens to the bad and the ugly that can't, won't come to the mosque? And I think this is where charities like Families Against Violence and individuals like James, myself, Clem and you, yeah. this is where we have a bigger impact in the heart of our communities than asking other people outside to yeah. come and help us and expect they're going to make uh, changes and miracles for us. Yeah, I think that's great things. Obviously, like you said, them, obviously the mosques, there's so much they can do. The kids are not going to go there. Mm. You need to grab them by doing other things like football, like you know, other opportunities, trying to get from the street. Um, it's amazing, man, and I think I'm, I'm casually there's too much information going on. I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at both of you, thinking, you know, and I think uh, if I don't miss it, you said you were you're the chairman as well. You sat so in the Ahmed actually the direct, uh, the, uh, one of the directors is the creative director, uh, mashallah And that what I love about Ahmed is he's a bit similar to myself. Uh, you can't just walk past all of this information. <laughs> well, this is the first I'm hearing of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I'm, I'm, I'm the creative. I was like, wait a minute, how many jobs have you got? Yeah, he, he, hey, sorry. I am he, tired. That's how many go, jobs I've got. If you, go, if you do go on our website, uh, clearmentyouth.com, yeah. yeah. uh, just put it there. Somewhere. You'll see uh, you've got Hassan, uh, Hassan Hussein, or as known in our community as Hassan Djibouti. He's one of the main directors. Oh, he's a good lad, man. Uh, great guy's got a lot of wealth of experience of community work and connection to the community. Dangerous footballer. Huh? Dangerous football. Like oh, yeah. Energy. Oh. It's got no breaks. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll park that one there. No, no <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> but uh, we love you. We love you, Hassan. <laughs> but in terms of uh, the rest of the team, so you've got myself and Ahmed, who sit on as other directors. Uh, I think I'm just there as a director. Ahmed is that down as a creative director. But we do more than what the title says. Mm. Um, I think Ahmed does a lot more in the community. He's one of those unsung yeah, heroes. 100%, you know, 100%, I know. I know, I know um, he recently did a marathon. You know. Half, half. <laughs> I want to put respect <laughs> on the difference between those who do a marathon and those that have done a half marathon. If you haven't watched the episode, you can catch that on other TV as well. Yeah, but it's... We've talked li- about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, um, I, I don't... My brain... Okay, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just, just pointing out, you know, the great causes of what individuals do. Yeah. And I think this is how we came about as Claremont Youth is. We've seen so many great individuals doing great things. 
Mm. How can we bring it all together and represent the community? So um, I think you've got other key unsung heroes, um, Fatima, Abdi, uh, you've got a young up and coming coach, Mohammed Abdullahi. Mm, it's good care, man. Yeah, you've got Leila, uh, Leila Ali, who's uh, one of our young, uh, sorry, one of our female football coaches developing that female side of it. So, mm. in terms of that 10 year project, what we use with the boys, we're trying to implement that with the girls now, trying to build that side of things in our yeah. communities because I feel like there's, no, there's a lot that. In terms of narratives and support that's out there, there's a lot of support for girls. But I feel like our local girls and girls from our background probably are not getting the support and the mm. need. So we just need to level the playing field. So and like, do, do we have a girls' teams? Yeah, yeah. So we've got a few girls' team. Uh, we've got under twelves, under tens. We've got boys and girls um, under eights. Just recently in the summer, the third, I think. We'll, first week of summer holidays yeah. they played a tournament first ever time they played but we've been training this group for the last three years mashallah they went on five teams entered uh, manchester fa uh, Fez, F, sorry see it to be at festival uh was done last year for the euros after off the back of the female england national team doing well so out of the five teams two of them won it uh, under 12s, boys won it under 8 and the rest of the three other teams finished runners up. Uh, coach Layla was uh, coaching one of the girls' team. Mashallah, it's amazing her, to see her growth and mm. development, uh, just being a parent originally and then getting involved and in supporting the girls. Wallahi, it's beautiful to see because I see how many doors it's opening for so many other girls that probably might not have got into mm. sports. Um, mm. So you've got a coach there, but I think there's another man in, behind the scenes that does great work, uh, likes to stay behind the scenes. I don't know why. Uh, he's the head of the academy. He's another director, technically. But, uh, but any chance he's shy? He's, uh, he's really shy, but he's got a pretty face. I don't know why he hides it. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, he's, he's in the room with us at the time. <laughs> but it's, it's Abdul Wahab, uh, one, of the, one of the best brothers you can find in this city. Wallahi, mashallah. Um, as a, from his character in terms of his skill sets uh, does so much for so many people in our community and we're proud to have him on Clement you make sure you drag him here next time you know what you never know I, he he might pick me up later on so I might drag him in for the ending yeah, I might drag him in but yeah that's the team no. uh, we, we there's more there's more than just the individuals I named there's so many people that do great things because I have I've seen your like some of the operations that obviously go on and you know Manchester Academy School. I've seen the, girls. the younger girls playing. I've got the younger girls, like the you got the the boys. I think it was the girls from like three or four, or five yeah, years from old. five years of age. Five years of age to sixteen years of age. Yeah, so I've yeah. seen that, and I've seen obviously the girls are coaching them, and I've seen obviously the boys being coached. I think the younger age as well. So I've seen some of the organisations. And to be honest with you, obviously I've, I've lived in Manchester all my life, yeah, yeah. and obviously we all grew up in Manchester. So, even though some of us are older than, like, you know what I mean? We don't want to talk about numbers, right? <laughs> but, like, you know, we never had anything like yeah, that before. Yeah. You know, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's never, I mean, this is why I'm actually so happy for you to come here and actually talk about these achievements that you've done. Because, like, even though we grew up, like, we didn't have the opportunities that, like, now the youngest are getting. Yeah, well, I know like, it's at different times now, but, like, the amount of organisations and even, like, girls playing football and the, guy, the kids are playing football... All we used to do is get together in a, in a, in a park, we would park and we just play ourselves. And that was it. Like, and obviously we ended up going to tournaments and dri drive our own cars to get there. Mm. Now that I'm out of organisation, what's going on right now is incredible. I mean... Got minibuses and everything now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Do you know what I mean? Like, and hopefully sooner or later, inshallah, we're going to be filming if there's a cup final and actually show exactly what Ahmed does so you can actually see it instead of talking about it. So hopefully that comes soon as well. Yeah, well, like, as, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of people don't know. They think this this journey was started 10 years ago. Probably started way before that. Mm. You know, all, all three of us played for the local team. And it's with the talent as well that was around the city, mashallah. We did well to first get selected. So that was <laughs> an achievement in itself. Um, I know in terms of um, Essen using the older generation, first generation Somalis. <laughs> I'm just throwing <laughs> older generation out there. Nah, nah. <laughs> when I say when I say older, older generation, generation, no, that's shot to fire. 
<laughs> you know, it's firing some shots at me right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of enjoying this. I'm, I'm not even that old, feel, bro. I feel quite young right now, so yeah. Yeah. keep going, keep going. No, no, but I, I kind of <laughs> felt like, especially my the, the age I was, I was in between your generation and yeah. Ahmed's generation, so we're talking about one year or two years here, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's like let's it's, just carry it's on. It's like a five month. <laughs> <laughs> But for me, well, like, uh, we've always known there's great talent. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? Um, and it's just, it's it's always saddened me why we were never fulfilling all of our potentials. But, the, uh, the, but the, the, that's, that's the issue, wasn't it? Like, the issue was we'd never had an organisation. I think that's what it was. I think our older generation was just happy to, you know, have got to the country and... I don't in know a better situation. I don't know if he came with us, but there was a one time that we played a friendly against Crew, um, Crew Alexandra. Mm. And don't forget, this team at that time was like. Sorry, this was in the nineteen. What? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Crew Alexandra. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they were in first division. Yeah. Okay. Now it's called the Championship. Okay. Cool. Like, you're making me feel old. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, so, <laughs> they invited us. Um, to come and play a friendly game. So it was me, Abd Salan up front. You had Signori playing. Oh, elite players. You had um, Yusuf. Legend. Um, Legend. So you had Yusuf, um, Soli, Guri at left back. Oh. You had uh, Hamoud Fer up front uh, at the back. Legends. Yeah, Hamoud, yeah. Hamoud Fer at the back. We had Ulul playing mm. on the right wing. We had Nasir, so we had Nasir 44, we had um, Sully, yeah, Sully was playing, we had Nasir Ferro, uh, we had Gale in the middle, basically, it was too many. It was too many. It was wow. too many. And don't forget, yeah, we, because they, we played this friendly match and we battered them. Don't forget, this is a professional football team. It sounds crazy. No, but bro, we battered them. And you know what, yeah, we were winning 1-0 the first half and then second half came along and then they started to show the fitness you know, because mm. obviously these guys are an elite fitness group, yeah. We weren't prepared. These, 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 these guys are ready for that. <laughs> these guys are marathon runners. Yeah, so, <laughs> so obviously their, their fitness level showed like, you know, the last like 20 to 25 minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah. And they ended up beating us 2-1. Mm. So at the end of the game, the coach came into our change room and he was like, um, oh, you guys are fantastic. He goes, like, I've never seen amount of talent and skills on you guys. Like you, if anything, he goes, these are professional football players and you guys were taking a mick. And he goes, by, by any chance, what, what league are you guys playing? And we were like, <laughs> league. <laughs> we're like, we don't play league. He goes, what do you mean you guys don't play in the league? So we, we don't play in the league. And he was like, not even a Sunday league. And I was like, no. I swear to God, the guy was just looking at us thinking, you guys, you guys are joking me, right? So said, no. After half of the alone, I had to stop. Yeah, Passed away now. He was, a, he was a coach at the time. But I mean, that amount of talent was there. It was just a joke. Bro. Absolutely joke, but like we just never had that whole. Look. Imagine if we had you oh. as a coach at the time, <laughs> I, I we wouldn't have wanted this like us, mate. You know what? I I think that's one of the things that put, led me towards coaching and and managing was due to the fact that we had the talent, mm. we had the potential, we had the ability, but it just all came down to politics, came down to mismanagement, came mm. down to and I, and I don't blame anyone, or I don't want to put point fingers at anywhere because I appreciate every experience and every moment yeah. that we had it, it was something all new to us we didn't I don't think we knew how good we were um, but I think once you've because we, did, we, we didn't think about football that way did we? We, we we just thought football was fun you playing with your friends in school outside school and it actually kept us busy yeah I think when we were, we started you know going high school colleges and football teams and uh, scouts seals and everything you know like, you're, you're talented who do you play for and then they, they see more of us and they think wow why he's not playing professionally or semi-professionally so I think we've always known it, especially in Manchester the talent's there the potential's there it just needed someone to sacrifice themselves and kind of have an understanding of mm. both the older generation and mm. also the younger generation yeah. and I think you know what um, I always say this was planned by God this was destined for me to do um, I, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do for a long time uh, but once I knew what my purpose or what I could do for my ummah my community um, I already knew listen we're always going to have potential and talent but what we need to do is 
create the platforms, create, create the create the bridge between us, uh, create the connections, um, and and let's make our community proud to be from where they they are. Cause it always gets a bad reputation mm. in terms of um, the crime levels and uh, social side of, of uh, antisocial side of things, but in terms of talent especially some of our females to, to all the unknown people within our community that don't have a voice for me it was always about let me try and create platforms to give a voice to the voiceless and mm-hmm. i think platforms even like Hazel tv like now it's great because you get to see uh, so many different people mm-hmm. uh, from manchester and you get to see them in their line in their light in their element uh, tell to speak about their backstory talk about what they do uh, in the city and mashallah once you've taken the time to watch everyone and hear everyone you get to realize manchester is actually there's a lot going on yeah, isn't there? there's a I lot mean, going on and you you'd rather probably it would be better to live in manchester <laughs> than you know uh, down in london where it's expensive 100%. um i think with midlands it's you know manchester it's always had tougher the, the further north you go the weather's not the best but at the same time, man, I think you get used to... Yeah, you can say that again, bro. Season. I was in Glasgow on Tuesday. Bro, we don't know cold. Yeah, it's different. So I, I left Manchester about 5 a.m. And it was like it was like 12 or 13 degrees. And I got there, it was like 3, bro. As soon as I got off the train, bro, my, my pants were stuck in cold. Never mind me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. So yeah. you started mentioning like, you know, Midlands, London, things like that. And obviously, I've, I've had the privilege to travel with yourselves and the team recently. Was it this year or last year? I'm trying to think when the whole um, this year, competition was. Yeah, this year. So uh, this what season. was that tournament, that competition? How did it come about? How did Manchester get involved? So in terms of that competition, it, um, it's called the Somali British Champions League. It's been running for four seasons uh, prior to us entering uh, the 22-23 season, which is last season. Um, I think we... A lot of people in the background played a major role in terms of entering Manchester because we hadn't entered this competition. I think we previously played in competitions similar, uh, like Leicester, London Week, um, where you know some we, of the great talent. Yeah, we've done. We, yeah, we've done them. I don't know. Before. I I think we won one competition in Birmingham, but I think there were so many other competitions we really should have dominated. Yeah. But I don't think we 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 went and achieved what we should have. But then again, I believe we had the players, but we just didn't have the right resources around us at the time. Um, but this time round, off the back of you know the ten year project, um, knowing these kids that have been winning for ten years, I felt like it's time for graduation. You know, uh, it's time to let the boys out. It's time to let Manchester be seen and heard. And I want to thank you know yourself, Ahmed. You was great in the background, helping and supporting it. myself, Abdul. You had the likes of Ahmed Signori, old legends, helping out in the background. Also, Ahmed Ali, who was the national team captain, um, had moved to Manchester recently. Uh, has his younger brother, Mahmoud, who was at Kirsten Ashton, played for the national team as well. So we we had, we had some great uh, experienced individuals that wanted us to be part of this competition. And I felt like the younger generation uh, just needed a platform to showcase their talents. Um, so... It was great timing uh, for we we kind of showcase to the world what Manchester is about and how we've always had talent. We just never showcased it the right way. And mm-hmm. finally, we'd been cooking something for the last 10 years. And the 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 giant was awoken in Manchester. And <laughs> I, I, we did tell him, uh, I remember the first game at home, I, I gave a message. I think we beat the previous previous years runners up Leicester really I, I'm sure you guys remember Leicester's always had some great players yeah. Rivaldo and some not the not the, no, the not, Rivaldo. The, not the Rivaldo <laughs> but it was a Somali lad he was called Rivaldo great left foot he used to come from Liverpool, uh, Leicester but they've always uh, had their own great talent and potential in Leicester mashallah great organisation um, we beat them at home in our second game um Eight one. That's the game I watched. Oh, did you go to that one? I left half time. 
Yeah. I was trying to wind them up as well, but like you know what they gave. They, they were talking to me for a while, and I was like, "Listen, this is a gunfire. You brought knives to a gunfire, <laughs> so this is unacceptable." What the hell is this? And they were like, "Yeah, we're missing one guy." I'm like, mate, I was cussing them, and obviously you had Ashker. Big up to Ashker, uh, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Ashker yeah, coming yeah. out with all the excuses and all. I'm like, "Listen, mate, these are your boys. They're getting butchered." Mate. <laughs> no credit to Ash. Uh, he did call me before we played Leicester, and he was like, "You know what? Don't let me down, boys. My Leicester boys are giving." Listen, it just t- tell me one thing, one thing only. Yeah. Did Ashley give you the secrets? You know what? Did he say, you know, you get that guy off the game, this is, mark this guy? This is this Because we need to know if he's from Manchester or he's from Sh- or from Leicester. And and I think this is the message that I was trying to portray to everyone. It wasn't to kind of put fear in anybody in terms of we're better than you. Mm. Um, Did he give us the ingredients? So That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so the, in terms of ingredients, when we have the best recipe and we have the best ingredient. Yes. There's no worry uh, from the opposition. Bro, come on, so that's I wasn't, I wasn't too worried because been... I knew the capabilities of our, of the younger lads. And you gotta remember, I've I've got to see them grow over the. You've been very kind, to Ash, man. You've no, been very kind. No, 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 no. Because I, I, I wanted to revoke his visa from from Manchester <laughs> if, you if you didn't give us the recipe for you know, what I mean, who's me, coming. He did give me a few little nuggets. Oh, there, say less, there, say less. I mean? uh, but in terms of um, tactics and stuff, well, I have always been of the mindset. Listen, I'm not here to worry about the opposition. We know what we can do. Let's uh, imprint our own philosophy. Oh, it's and, a strong team there, man. You know what I mean? So, and there's a philosophy and a, and a style of play that we played with, which was uh, re- reminiscent of what Man City plays with right now with Guardiola. The funny thing is, this whole 10-year project started when Guardiola was in Barca. And I, I kind of took inspiration from the likes of uh, Pep. Because I could see, I'm a footballing person, I could see the game evolving, the style of football changing. Spain, I think, was dominating at that mm. period of time. Barca was dominating. So annoying. Me being a United fan, you know. Seeing what they did to us, bro. Yeah, I remember, say, Alex Ferguson, a legend in the game who I respected. His hands were shivering and shaking against Barca. And he, he didn't have no ideas to how to combat against the style. And we, United had great players, so it doesn't matter if you've got great players. Mm. It's If you have a unity and, and a sense of style and a, and a, and a playing style uh, and, I, and what I loved about the lads is they'd grown up together so there was a chemistry between them that was like a brotherhood um, and I think I don't think any other team outside of Manchester probably had that mm. uh, bond and relationship so we these boys beat the likes of Man City's academy and United and all sorts so uh, he, he was a uh, a bunch of guys from a different city that's the mindset that I expected the boys to go with and they did that against Leicester who were last year's finalists and in the first game of the group stage we beat the semi-finalist Tower United so I think butchering teams early yeah you know what a lot of people don't even realise that first game though we didn't even have a warm up we went in the minibus uh, mashallah, you know, again, credit to Families Against Violence for, you know, helping us with the minibus. Transport was not an issue in terms of going to away games. But our first ever game was Tower United. Um, we were going to East London, nearly four hour travel. Uh, we, we were, we got caught up in traffic um, just before, I think it was a four o'clock kick No time to warm up, nothing. We literally got there quarter past, quarter past four. No, the boys got chained in the minibus, jumped out, no warm up, and, and you know did did the business, got the result. Got one, I think we won three one on the day. Could have been five six, and and I think you've got guys that were playing for Tower who are in the national team like Zachariah, uh, who plays for Hashtag United. <laughs> you know, so this was this was not against uh, weak opposition. Mm. This was against good oppositions. Leicester again, when we were playing at home. I love the, how the community came together and the crowd it brought, the uncles, the aunties, uh, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers. Um, it was beautiful. The scenery was beautiful. I appreciate you coming through. You know, you was always there in the heart of these uh, competitions. Yeah. So to get that support for the boys, it was amazing. And 8-1 sent a big message, which I, I think it was the quote of the competition, which was... We are not here to take part, but we are here to take over. So the week, when we beat Leicester in Manchester, was that the, the 
Second game. Oh, that second game. That was the second game. In so the basically, stages. then after that, you go to the last sixteen. No, no, there are still group stages, isn't so, it? So, oh, so you had four teams in the group stages. So you had three groups, four teams in it. Two would uh, progress to the knockout stages. So you'd have at least five. Sorry, sorry, six games. Three home games, three away games. Oh, that's good. So we we ended up actually finishing top of our group, unbeaten, maximum points, eighteen points. We. Manchester Powerhouse and I think FC Hilltop from London who are a semi-professional team mashallah doing great things down south in terms of as a flagship for Somalis uh, Somali communities I think that's a blueprint that we can also look towards um, they've got a, an academy they've got a women's team and they're in the fifth tier of uh, the English Oh wow, so they're actually in there? Yeah, yeah, they're in there, they play in FA Cup, so it was amazing. So Manchester and Hilltop were the only two teams that were unbeaten in the group stages with maximum points mm. coming to the semi-finals. So, okay, so you guys met in the semi-final? No, we, we, met the, we met Hilltop in the final. Oh wow. Um, but we played quarter-final, we played OIR, another London team, then semis, in, we played Cardiff Bay Warriors, who were last year's winners. You know, Cardiff's what? never easy game, is it? No, it was never it's easy. Never been an easy game. Never easy when we played. It's a very small, uh, I don't know what. But you know what? Credit to the brothers because you remember Ahmed Snorri, who yeah, used yeah. to play for Cardiff when we used to play. Yeah. So he's managing them. So it was it was amazing to see. Bro, him we never had an easy game there. Yeah. You know what? I've always heard about the San Siro, uh, how their stadium is. So we had them in the first leg at home. We beat them comfortably, 3-1. They didn't really create too much When you uh, go problems. there, isn't it? When we went there, again though, and, and, and I think we need to stop doing this, it's we came late, not, not a proper one. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think it was the last time we, 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 it's the last time we did that, because uh, I think it nearly cost us. Um, in terms of preparation-wise, but we got there and I think, it started off. We scored the first goal. I think we were winning from the first leg, three one. We were, we scored the early goal. The, the the crowd, the the atmosphere was hostile. If if it was any professional game, I could only re- compare it to Galatasaray or you've gone down to some East European uh, team. You know, it was just they were passionate. They yeah. they were supporting their team, and and I loved it. And it it actually that match went viral. Um, in terms of for them they needed to come back into the game so they equalised made it um, 1-1 in the second leg so on aggregate we were still ahead 4-2 but I'm not gonna I never like to blame you know officiate officials are the officiate it's fine this is our podcast you know what say what you need to say (laughs) Listen, I, I don't think there's anything I need to say. I think everything's evident. It's, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's, it, uh, we're meant to play a 90-minute game. Was, was the know? official being offered a free dinner or something? No, but you just got to look how long... It's the longest football match ever played. Well, it, was three hours, it was three hours and 40 <laughs> minutes, I think. You know, Is I that the new Premier League rules? Just like, <laughs> listen, I, I'm doing this. I don't know. He added extra time, but he gave a penalty for the equaliser on the match on the second leg, which uh, it was 1-1 at half time. We went into second half, free kicks, penalties that he wasn't giving. There was challenges coming from behind. I, I think everyone was like, who's this referee? But I think they, Cardiff let themselves down by the, or the officiating, let them down and kind of made us look better in the sense that we seem like the underdogs. Um, I think they'd done fantastic to get to get to 2-1 in the game. And then in the last minute, a free kick, I believe that was never a free kick for them. Um, and maybe a potential offside that, that, that they don't really want to show. Uh, but in terms of the, the ball into the box and the header. Oh, uh, the header from, was from Were the you there? Yeah, so... No way. I was there, bro. I see it. I was like, what? Yeah, it was, it was like if you could imagine uh, a movie, uh, yeah. last kick of the game. It's like they won. Last... Literally, the ball came to the back post. Great header from uh, Sizoko. He's called their captain for Cardiff. He's good. Big unit, big He's lad. Good. Scored important goals for them throughout the competition. Even this last season and this, the year they won it. Um, for that, for him to have been in the battlefield, 
because I know we didn't make it easy for him uh, mm. throughout the game and for him I think he went off on cramp injury but the will in the lad and the the mentality I love that about him and Cardiff um, was they never gave up and that's when they scored the the third goal made it 4-4 and I agree it went to extra time no way I swear yeah. to you it went to we're talking about 105th minute or something <laughs> No, once when it was right it, on the it, it feels, over. Like, just, yeah. bro, it feels like time repeats itself, bro. So we had the same a 90, problem. Before. A ninety-minute game, but if you look on YouTube, it's a hundred and twenty-five minutes. <laughs> you keep saying let's play. So I don't know, like technically, <laughs> uh, but extra time anyway. The game went to extra time, and I think this is what people don't understand about our boys. And I told them when they were going to play that match, it was never about football. It was never about how beautiful we can play the game it was always going to be a battle it, we were going to be tested and our wills would be tested and I I always knew in terms of the 10 year project the boys have come back from 4-0 3-0 5-0s so I knew they got the character yeah the stage was set the stage was set and I knew something everyone else didn't know which was we still had Omar on the bench who was mm. still fresh um, which we took him off early in the game um, and then we still had him to come off the bench so they were getting tired their best players were all coming off and we still had a few we had Abdur Rashid to still come off the bench oh wow Abdur Rashid was on the bench for you yeah we still had oh, he's the, a killer we him. had Yasir Salim he was still so Abdur Rashid is a killer bro there was a few of our lads oh, yeah, Abdur Rashid on the bench bro, bro he, 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 he assisted he's the, same the goal later, so he later. assisted the goal as well um, but he's an experienced quality oh, yeah, player absolutely and, and I want to give a lot of credit as well to um, players like Abdi Rashid, uh, Ishi, uh, Abdi, Hassan Salim. Um, there, there are. There's also Ahmed Ali and Mahmoud Ali, um, all the lads that have supported the younger generation mm. in being good role models and uh, being around them to help them develop their game and and, and inspire them as well. Like well, if the good players are playing with us because they re they had the respect for these older boys and. I had the luxury because of being friends and knowing them, bringing them into the fold. And I think that's what helped us to be successful. Is we had a blend of experience and a blend of youth. Um, so that's a good mix. Came, that's yeah. a good mix. That so don't get me waiting right now. So at this moment, I'm following the story. We're on four four right now. Four four. Okay. So what happened next? What the hell? We're like, come extra, on. Extra time. It's gone. Extra time. Go on. Um, I think people are going get going off the pitch with cramp. Um, I think I'm losing my voice. There's even a, me passionately speaking <laughs> on Somali athlete. Uh, Somali athlete was there. Again, great brother. Um, you know, there was no team that he was supporting there, but he was, he wanted to Enjoy support. The show. Yeah, he wanted yeah. to support the Somali uh, competition. And really, he, he enjoyed it. Um, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, we came back from literally from being kicked out you know of the competition because it could have gone penalties and they're the home team yeah you don't want that <laughs> we don't want that uh, we had numerous chances we had in the extra time I think we could have scored three four clear goals their keeper was man of the match this is how their keeper was the man of the match because the saves that he pulled oh, off yeah. was amazing and I think if he wasn't I, this is the funny thing I believe every single one of their players played out of their skin like they, they literally so they couldn't to. do any more they they couldn't do more yeah. and and I knew that and I'm looking at our squad and, and I know we've not done enough yet yeah. mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. wait it's only a matter of time before we kind of get into the game I mean, you know how football is momentum mm -hmm. the momentum shifted in extra time we started being more dominating um, ch created chances uh, we, we didn't score in the first half of extra time but second half you know clutch time game time Come after man, come after the hour. Uh, Omar Ibrahim scores an absolute. Banger. Come up with the goods, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Abdul Rashid recovered the ball in in our own half, carried it, laid it off for the youngster, and said, "Go stick it in the top bin, lad." And he 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 did that, and he was he he was actually one of the best players in the competition because yeah. he'd scored in every every match, every fixture, and that was from midfield. So credit to Omar uh, Omar Ibrahim, if you don't know. A good kid that deserves to be maybe in the national team and given oh, an yeah. opportunity. Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely. Um, this is a kid that's, you know, even in the pandemic, 
was around the likes of, you know, um, Cole Palmer that was playing for Man City now at Chelsea. Um, there, there was lads like, you know, Greenwood and... Um, Curtis Co- Secretary Stemmers. Yeah, and Ant- Anthony Alango. No, they... When the pandemic happened, again, Coach Mo, hopefully you get an opportunity to bring him on you know, on Haddle TVs. He's meant to be my young apprentice, uh, <laughs> prodigy. Uh, inshallah, he's got his own story to tell. Um, and he's been, he works at United, but he was helping a lot of lads that were at United or City mm. that played for them professionally. Um, so in the pandemic, there was a lot of them that were left uh, idling. The first teams were playing, but the under twenty threes and that weren't. So he did a few competitions uh, on the ground. Omar and a few of our all the local Somali talents entered and played in the competition. And I think the likes of Greenwood, Cole Palmer, and that were like, "Yo, Omar, Ibrahim, the ball is white. Who they who, who are they playing for? Do you know what I mean? Expecting mm. them to say, yeah, I'm playing for a professional team as well.' So this is an area that we need to help our community. Uh, definitely, um, and the talents there. And anyway. In terms of the Cardiff game, Omar came good um, and got the winning goal uh, in extra time. Celebration to match it as well, <laughs> Conor McGregor. You know? Tell me you got the footage. Oh, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. it's going to come up, don't worry. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show the you. Scenery, after this. Yeah. The I scenery. I have not seen all of this. I have not. Okay, this is, this is good. I know there was, a, there was a... But the thing is that every time someone says, oh, there was a tough game in Cardiff, I'm like, yeah. When, when does it ever been an easy game in Cardiff? That's true. But in terms of, listen, in terms of like hospitality after the game, they oh, looked yeah, after they us. Um, and, and me and Ahmed, we knew each other, their manager for Cardiff, because he was one of the lads that used yeah. to play against us when we played against them. Um, in terms of competition, in terms of what the what that competition was about, I felt like that was the final yeah. in mm. that um, it was a great advocate for Somali Champions League, Somali British Champions League. You know, mm. I see a lot of our kids... Um, especially the new generation, they lack that identity. The Cardiff game and the, that goal that Cardiff scored, it actually went viral in terms of so many, I think Barstool, in terms of the content and the audience it captured, it was probably in thousands, if not tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands potentially by now if you equate everything together um, across multiple platforms. So you can see the dem- the. the the need and the demand for for content like that. Um, but I, I, I want to give credit to everyone, every team that was part of that journey. How was the celebration, man? How was how was it? You know what? It was... Did, did you jump in? Uh, and, and me, no. I couldn't jump in, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the man with the camera, so I have to... You know what? Pre- Hold this camera for one second. I, I have to protect my gear at all times. <laughs> <laughs> it should I be a cool edge, yeah? Yeah, man. I think um, myself and Ab- Abdul Wahab were playing... Uh, coach, manager, uh, fan. fan, but also we were security, <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we were stewards. Crowd management. Crowd poli- yeah, crowd policing everyone and mashallah though. Alhamdulillah, nothing, nothing major, nothing uh, crazy happened, but I think Cardiff celebrated the uh, equaliser well and I think we celebrated even better in terms of the <laughs> winning goal uh, to take us to the final. And it, it, was, it was out of respect, I think, respect to them. Uh, they left it on the pitch and respect to us we left it on the pitch and oh definitely they, they, they after the game uh, great hospitality took us to the restaurant had a nice meal told us they'll get us back next time so <laughs> yeah you guys can keep we're waiting, waiting. Yeah, yeah. keep waiting so obviously that took us to the final so who are we facing in the final in, in this occasion so we you, you would have thought we, we might still be favourites, but we're the newcomers still. No one knew about Manchester. Um, at this moment, you still had Hilltop that were unbeaten. Um, especially us, we were unbeaten till that uh, last match of Cardiff, where we won every match or were unbeaten up to that point. Mm. Then we lost the second leg, 3-2. So technically we lost a 100% record, uh, Hilltop respectfully kept theirs so it, it made them favorites uh, rightly so and um, i think this is when the antics started um, social media they had a big social media following they're from west london they have a few famous uh, supporters like uh, youtube uh, uh, chunks uh, sharky so i think they they did a few favors for um, hilltop 
after a few of our lads um, kind of kind of initiated a reaction out of them. Uh, I think they were all quiet throughout the whole season. And I think one of our lads had uh, seen a professional player, uh, Akpom, who used to play for Arsenal, plays for Middlesbrough, top goal scorer last season in the Championship. We got him to give a shout out for the, the competition and for Manchester Powerhouse to do well. I think that kind of rubbed them the wrong way. So mm. they, they asked for a few favours. They got a few uh, professional players involved, like Jack Grealish. We had a Champions League final the, the Saturday before the final that we were playing on Sunday. Also had Trent, Trent Alexandra, um, who plays for Liverpool. Yeah, I've, I've it, seen him on, I so, think it was it Twitter or something. Instagram, Instagram, yeah. yeah. So I've, they, seen, I've seen his message. They, yeah. they, they promoted the competition, but they were also supporting Hilltop. So uh, they were kind of showboating, saying, listen, we've got the yeah. famous people, we're the ballers, we're the best team. We're in the 50. And I love, like I said, I always love an underdog story. Yeah. Um, in be in terms of everything outside of the pitch, probably, I give them credit, they're probably ahead of us in these areas. But one thing I was always confident on is on the pitch. And no matter who they get, no matter who speaks for them, it ain't any of them playing for them. Um, and I think... The final was a lot more easier than the semi-final um, again. Seriously? Yeah. I think, again, it's just a game of... let. They felt like they were the better ball-playing team. So we let them have the ball, break us. Uh, defensively, we were very strong, uh, having the likes of Ahmed Ali. But what a lot, of, a lot of people don't know is we were missing a lot of our best players as well out of the final, especially in the attacking third. Mm-hmm. It was holiday season, like, everyone yeah. was travelling. Everyone was away on holiday. Um, eventually, the game started. First 10, 10 15 minutes, captain, come if the man, come if the hour. Um, towering header, good free kick from Yusuf Drapes. Uh, beautiful delivery. He's been playing well as well himself, Yusuf uh, Drapes. Um, put a beautiful in. Bullet header, absolutely. Ah. If you ever do get to manage to watch the highlights back, check it out on YouTube on Manchester Powerhouse. Uh, if not, check out YY Media uh, Productions. Or if not, pass the ball. Handle TV you might even soon have yeah, it on there. Hopefully. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah, there's multiple uh, platforms where it's it's been shared on. Great header uh, from Ahmed. Um, they they equalised um, in the first half. Good free kick. I think the wall could have done better. The keeper could have done better. So it's areas and things that we could have improved on. Um, second half. Wow, uh, great run from Munye. Absolute, just like a knife. You watched this game? Bro, I was in Namibia, in the south of Africa. Yeah. It was oh, like, wow. it was live streaming. <laughs> I was closer to them. <laughs> and I was like, right. someone get me Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> but the beautiful thing, what I loved about this competition is, um, it was live streamed as well. So the yeah. families, uncles, aunties, people were telling us they were watching it. And, yeah. and this is the beautiful thing of competitions like, like this was it brings the whole families together the whole community is together um and i think ahmed yeah he, he went away <laughs> doing charity work at that time no no no, no. Was it a holiday? this was a marshall trip <laughs> <laughs> this was boys let's get together <laughs> and no. see some wild animals but yeah go ahead but i remember i, I remember you watching yeah uh, i remember ahmed was watching it down um in africa mm. there was a lot of other people that absolutely enjoyed it um, we ended up scoring a beautiful goal to to win it with, which was um, we had a corner or a free kick. It got cleared uh, on the transition. Uh, we won it back in, in on the halfway line. Our right back. What they don't understand is our right back used to be a winger, um, and because of the style of play we play mm. with, I make sure our full backs. Are literally uh, our wingers uh, so because we keep possession mm. we've got like two right wingers two left wingers playing so they're defensively good as well though that's mm. the, the beautiful thing um, but Munye 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 if you don't know he's one of the kids originally started with me when he was under eight under nine uh, his whole family his dad great he was always there for every match one of the best parents I've, I've come across in terms mm. of support wise which is really good family. yeah you know what I mean uh, especially in a time that we live in where you don't see many male role models or male fathers around 
Khalid was always around, same as my dad and, and a few other guys. Uh, so credit to him and all the older men that have always supported us. Uh, Jelani, Khalid, and many others. Um, I can't, I, I can't name everyone because yeah. I'll forget. But I, I just want to say thank you to all of them. In terms of um, Munye, got the ball on the halfway. Uh, went past three, four players. Played the ball into Abdul Rashid. Abdul Rashid slotted into the bottom corner. Game set match, you know. Um, I think it disheartened them. Yeah. And then I think what we did was we just sat back, hit them on the counter. But if anything, it, it played to our style of football after that. Yeah. Um, and it, I think they were that disheartened. There was about six, seven hundred fans there. There was they had their own city TV guy there. You know, I think L V from Arsenal TV yeah, yeah, is yeah. there on the sidelines. So they have they brought a big crowd. But as I said in the beginning of the competition. We're not here to take part, we're here to take yeah. over. And at the end of the scenes, sorry, the end of the match, the scenery, all you could see was the flares, the colours of the team, the fireworks, and how many people that were happy. And you know what? A lot of people don't realise there were so many people, amongst even in our camp, uh, friends, people that we used to be friends, people yeah. that were siblings, that probably haven't even got along with each other. And the beautiful thing what that football match did was... It brought us all together and everyone had a great experience and mashallah that's the power of football that's the power of sports yeah, and, definitely. and i hope hilltop don't you know i've I, we've apologized in terms of some of the actions at the end we could have been a bit more respectful in in making sure that they uh, they got the respect that they deserve yeah, definitely. Um, but credit to hilltop i think they will always be around uh, london's always had great teams i think for a long, long time, everyone's always thought down south is where the talent is. And I f what I liked was last the year before Cardiff showed that the talent's not just in down south. Mm -hmm. And I think last season with Manchester coming through, making big claims, backing the claims and bringing something extra to the competition in terms of excitement, entertainment. Um, wallahi, um, it can only get bigger and better. Um, so did we, did we, so we finished on 2-1? Finished two one. We won. We lifted the trophy. Come on, we Manchester, Manchester twenty twenty two twenty three. <laughs> my boy, I've just finished off. Yeah, Abdul Rashid. I told you he's a killer, man. He's a killer, bro. I've been telling all these youngsters, yo, this, uh, this, <laughs> this <laughs> older guy. They don't, know, they, don't, they don't know this guy. He has yeah. been a killer always, man. You know the sad thing is, Hilltop believed that they were the favourites, and and this is the thing that they didn't so you understand. Don't, you don't want to get over too confident, man. But this is where they got confident. They didn't. They didn't know we had Abdul Rashid. Who's, who's previously played at a high level, yeah. played for the national team. His brother was actually the first Somali player to play in the Premier League. Yeah. So officially, yeah. Abdi Salan Ibrahim, go do your research mm -hmm. if you don't know, was it back in 2010, just before the Arab takeover. He was the first Somali that played. He won the yeah, FA Youth Cup. I remember. And, and they were competitive to Vieira at one point. Patrick, yeah, he was touted yeah. as the next Patrick Vieira. So we had uh, the likes of Abdul Rashid up front for us. Yeah. Then you've got the likes of Moha and Ahmed <laughs> Ali at the back for us. Adding the youngsters that have been beating academies like United and City. I'm thinking, who who are you? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why we sh why should we but say you? Sometimes, sometimes it's beautiful to have that surprise. Oh, it was a you know what I mean? You know what I mean? When, you, <laughs> when they when they think that you don't have the players, mm. and then all these guys coming through. Well, like you fantastic. know, the crazy thing was we were spoiled in terms of talent. So now, so now you guys are the champions. Mm -hmm. So now everybody knows your big weapons now, yeah. So we're gonna have to bring it next year even harder now. I think I think what we're gonna do is we're definitely gonna fly the flagship and try and be back-to-back -back champions if we can has that been done before and i don't think no one's done it in this competition <laughs> yet um so I, the, the, the problem has been there was a lot of uh, the competition kind of was in jeopardy uh, mm. for, the, for the new season that it might not be continued now a lot of people don't see it. again like you said ahmed there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes I'm, i've been working behind the scenes with ahmed ali abdul wahab and on others um to try and make sure this competition is is there for these for the next yeah, generation so i think well, we've done our best to try and create some form of like interim season uh, where there will be eight teams existing teams um and then the year after where we'll go back to group stages funny thing is 
Abdul, yourself, Ahmed, Asad, myself, we used to play for the back four <laughs> in the local team. Now we're the same guys that are, you know, defending and protecting our community. So no, it's, definitely, man. It's, it's amazing. It's like the skills and the attributes that we pick up from football we can use in life as life skills. So. Transferable skills, as they call it, on the definitely, CV. Definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> again, if you enjoyed any of this stuff, again, like. We're on a road to 500 subs. So if you're just watching this, just subscribe. You don't have to even hit the bell notification, but do that as well anyways, because, you know, it's not really going to hurt. It, what do you call it? It's free rent. So it's a free rent. Free rent. Yeah, free rent. Yeah. On, on the house. Just, just hit that button. Any questions, any comments about anything that was said? Drop it or below. if you want to get in contact with Ahmed and obviously all the organizations and what he's doing, if you've got a little boy, a little girl, doesn't matter. If you cannot, if you had all the information that was given out already, then you can just message us in the inbox and then we can get in contact with you. And we'll put some stuff in the description below as well so yep. you, it's easily accessible. Yep. Again, roll to 500. Hit that subscribe. Subscribe and like and share.